we uh, had a 2019 GT3 RS black car. Whoever had the car previously did a couple gold accents to it. The car was actually really pretty. Um, y sock car, ceramic brakes, great car. Now in the Boston area, we have lots of colleges, schools, really smart kids, kids with money, kids that come from money, kids from overseas. The crypto boom created lots of young millionaires. And it's not uncommon to have someone walk in in dirty sneakers and dirty jeans and a t-shirt and why are you $200,000 for a car? It happens pretty often. We had a kid uh, about 20 years old come in and purchase with a check, a cashier's check. Um, a Audi RS Q8. Cashier's check, takes a couple days for us to clear, but again, it's a cashier's check. We're, we're gonna give the car everything else about where he lived, all of these things are all checked out. Well, it turns out that this kid was able to get into somebody's account information for their, I don't know if it was their retirement account or investment account or whatever, and was able to move money from their account into his account get a certified check from his bank account and give it to us. The mistake that he made with the RSQ8 was that the money that was transferred, the person that had that account got notification of that. And so that's not my, so it took a few days for it to figure out. So they pulled the money back out of his account. He comes back in a week later. I really don't like the Audi RSQ8. This was a total mistake. I should have gotten the GT3 RS that I liked in the showroom. Can I please buy that? Sure, no problem. He gets another cashier check for the difference. Takes the GT3 RS home. Comes back the next day, he's a little bit of a problem with the car. At the same time, we see his dad pull in with another vehicle from one of our other dealerships. Yep, just bought it from your dealership up the street. That's that thing, same story. He's not gone for an hour. We get a call from accounting and the general manager at this dealership walks into my office and goes, you're never going to believe this. I said, what, what happened? He goes, both checks, bad. We're like, okay, this kid talked about all this money he made in crypto and like he was showing us his accounts and all these things. Like all the money was there. Well, it turns out that they had put a hold on all the money. His bank had put a hold on all that money after he had gotten the cashier's check. And, and again, I don't know how all the banking stuff works, but like once there's a hold on now, the checks are invalid. There's all these moving pieces. So... He gets away with it, but had to bring the cars back to us. Oh, it's a misunderstanding. I'll bring the money on Monday, ba 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 ba. So we send our tow team to pick up the trucks and get the cars back. Of course, never hear from him again. So now we've kind of let a couple other dealers in the area know what's going on. I call a friend at an Audi dealership. The kid was in the showroom trying to buy an R8. So same situation, has a cashier's check for the correct amount. So apparently what happened was that he had a bunch of cars that he was going to go out and buy, a ton of them. And he had, you know, uh, he had called all these dealerships. What's the documentation fee? What's the tax? So he had the exact dollar amount. So he'd walk in with the check and give the exact dollar amount and leave with the car. So he was hoping that by the time someone caught up with him or caught up to all of the, caught up to the money, the money was already spent. And he had all these cars too bad. Whether he would flip those cars, sell them over. I don't know what his end game was, but Thankfully, they said, oh, well, with the R8, there's actually a couple of service things we need to do from it, so we need to hold the car. The next day, they called him and said, hey, sorry, there's a problem with the car. We can't sell the car. Move on. Next day, he goes to another dealership, buys a GT500 and a Camaro ZL1, whatever the top Camaro is. Same situation. Already had the checks ready to go. Checks bounce. So now... The FBI, local police, state police, they're all getting involved, trying to find out what's happening and what's going on. So we got a federal agent in the dealership having a conversation with us. We give them all the information, all of the video from these people in the dealership of them handing over the... Basically, make a long story short, the older gentleman was the younger kid's lover. And they had schemed up this whole thing to essentially steal money from some retirees and from their retirement or investment accounts. The This one happened to be out west somewhere, Arizona or New Mexico or something. And um, I guess what they were trying to do was they found they were able to break into a couple larger accounts where they thought maybe someone would miss a million bucks or someone would miss two million bucks or whatever. But whoever this person was had some type of notification set up, but it took them a little bit of time to figure out what actually happened. And in that one week's time, these guys bought eight different cars and had titles 
to a couple of the cars because if you paid cash, the title goes right with you. You go, I'm going to register the car myself, however it works. So I guess one of the dealerships that got hit still doesn't have the cars or the money because they either sold the cars to someone else or flipped them or sent them overseas or however it all happened in the time it took between them getting these cars and actually the feds, you know, coming down on them. Recently, the youngest of them, the one that did most of the dirty work ended up being found guilty and is now in jail. You know, they got him on interstate wire fraud, fraudulent checks, using a, a fake ID. I mean, like, I mean, the whole thing, they got him on it all. But I don't understand what the end game was because are you just think you're going to keep these cars with this fake money because they were out driving the cars around. He's got them on Instagram and on Facebook. Hey, check out my new car. Check out this, check out that. Like, what was your end game? Like, how did you think that they would never find you? In the past, we've actually had people pull up accounts to show us their accounts, log in. So, okay, well, the money's there. Shouldn't be an issue, especially if you're a local buyer and it's a cashier's check. Personal checks was always the bank to verify. If we know you, we might accept it. But now it's just, that is all over uh, across all our businesses. It's either a wire, finance, or you wait till the check clears. So, and it's interesting, you know, consumers get very frustrated. Well, how can we make me finance? Are you trying to make money on me? There's actually some protection. There's a layer of protection for the dealer, especially from out of state where I don't know if your check is going to bounce a few days later. I don't know who you are, where you're from, but if you finance with me and give me, give me all of your information, chances are I'm going to be able to verify who you are between now and then. Now, there are also some fraudsters out there that are pretending to be other people and trying to finance cars as well. We've had multiple occasions where the license didn't match up with the, uh, with the paperwork, or you kind of look at the license and you've seen a California ID before. It doesn't really look like a California ID, but where people are trying to finance cars in elderly people's names. So again, they're targeting the elderly. Maybe they think the money's not going to go missing. Maybe this person is in a home or whatever it is, um, but they are targeting them and essentially financing cars in their names. Again, I don't know what the end game is, is there with that because eventually the car is going to get found and repoed. Um, so is that car going overseas? Like what's actually happening there? But as a dealer, you know, we have to do way more verification than we ever have. And COVID brought a lot of this stuff on. You know, when you couldn't do stuff remotely, when it was weird to do stuff remotely, now doing everything remotely, these fraudsters and scammers have kind of figured out that, okay, without having to be there in front of someone, uh, we're certainly able to, uh, to uh, make this easier on ourselves. So, But we're seeing more and more across our business, whether at one of our Hyundai or Honda dealerships or at our Porsche dealership or Ferrari dealership, we're finding more and more fake checks, fake cashier checks, people trying to wire money. There's this form, I can't think of the name of it, but like, oh, can we buy this car on this form? And the money gets sent to you from some government account. There's all these weird frauds and scams going on that they're trying to scam dealers and trying to scam private parties. It's even more dangerous than ever to try to sell a car private party right now because of all of these uh, scammers that are out there. And you know, private party, you may not have know all the intricacies of a transaction, but if a scammer sounds like they know what they're talking about, you may happen to be gullible enough to listen to that. So we're seeing more and more of it. We're hearing about it from uh, people that have you know, almost sold the car privately and, been, and it was too fishy, so they came and sold the cars to us instead. We're lucky because we would have been out, you know, uh, some half a million dollars in cars from just two of our dealerships from this one person. Premier Financial Services makes it easier and more affordable than you could possibly imagine to own your dream car. Their simple lease is one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits like the tax savings and the low payments of a lease with all the additional benefits that you'd normally find in a traditional finance arrangement. You can build up equity, you can pay it off early, you can trade in and out of cars because you get a very clear and easy to understand amortization table to understand what your payoff will be any month throughout your term. And all the while, the amazing team from Premier Financial Services be right there to help you along the way. They've been supporters of the VinWiki channel now for five years in a row, so we can't thank them enough for that, but mostly we're thankful for the fact that they can help you make it easier than ever to own your dream car. Check them out now.